Insightful Podcasts by Informative Hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 56, Motivation and Inspiration. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my mature and motivated co-host, Madison Whalen. Hello. How are you doing today, Maddie? Pretty good. Have a good week this week? Sort of. That's really not a yes, but okay. It just went slowly, okay? That's really my only problem. Okay. Uh, So this week we will be talking... Motivation and inspiration. Um, you tell me what the meaning of motivation is to you. Uh, motivation is something that will is like. Um, I guess I'll just have to picture a scenario at this point. Sure, that's so fine. if you're um, if you want to do um, a sport and you want to um be good at it um motivation to your goal is like being inspired by others who have um done um done similar um activities to what you want to achieve okay then what does inspiration mean <clears throat> inspiration is basically um you to feel, motivate someone to do something. <laughs> really? Um, basically, inspiration is um, something a person um, receives um, from someone else or some other factor. Okay. Um, that um, that will um, ultimately help them. Ad- accomplish a goal look i'm sorry i'm not good with definitions no, i think i think you illustrate kind of what i why we're doing this podcast because they're difficult to define terms yeah so the way that the definitions that i found that i like the best were so what does motive what does it mean to motivate someone <clears throat> to make someone feel determined to do something or enthusiastic about doing it which i think is pretty much what you said about motivation yeah What does it mean to inspire someone? So the definition that I have for this is if someone or something inspires you to do something new or unusual, they make you want to do it. Hmm. If someone or something inspires you, they give you new ideas and a strong feeling of enthusiasm. If a book, work of art, or action is inspiring by something, that thing is the source of the idea for it. <clears throat> so what's the difference between motivation and inspiration? So inspiration is something that you feel on the inside while motivation is something from the outside that compels you to take action. Inspiration is a driving force while motivation is a pulling force is another way to think of it. Mm. Uh, some people believe that motivation is for lazy people while uh, because they cannot be bothered to get things done. So a couple different ways to look at it. And we're just going to sort of keep those uh, definitions and examples in mind as we go through. So what we're going to talk about, and this one's a pretty straightforward topic here, I think. Um, I think we all kind of have an idea of what motivation and inspiration are. So we're going to talk about tips for motivating people in general Mm -hmm. and then we are going to talk about tips for motivating teens Mm. and i think we'll find that it's a little bit different when we do it okay so we'll come back and we'll talk about tips for motivating people 
So the background for this episode came from a website called understandingteenagers.com. And there's a couple of key things that they point out. And I want to throw these at you and kind of get your ideas on it. All right. So the first tip that they have for motivating, motivating people is ask the question, what's in it for me? So... If your teen doesn't understand what the task has to bless you, thank you, has to do with them or their well being, then it'll be a struggle for them to find the desire to carry it out. So, for instance, um, you have to do a math assignment for school, uh -huh. and the teacher gives you um, this math assignment, the one that we were working on, the, the, the polygon one that we were working on, for oh, instance. Yeah. So the teacher gives that to you and tells you how to do it. What's in it for you at that point? Well, if you end up doing it, you will, um, well, first off, you'll gain more knowledge. And that'll eventually help you later on in either your life if you choose to do something with geometry or whether, or whether it'll just get you through the rest of school. Plus, the overall test grade, if you're actually able to do it, will overall, well, if you have a slightly lower grade, will over, will be able to improve, um, your, um, uh, uh, your overall average. That's a very good point. So for you, in that instance, you had two motivating factors. You had the, the attainment of knowledge and you had the advancement of your academics. Uh, a lot of teenagers look for that kind of motivation. Um, it also goes on to say the teenagers long to feel significant. They want to demonstrate to themselves and to the world that they matter and are capable of making a difference. Uh, do you think that that's a motivating factor for you, that you kind of want to show what you're made of, you know? Yeah, like, I don't want um, to be that kind of person that... Um is just like everybody else. I mean, I know we're all different, but I don't want to be the average human. Right. I want to be more above. I mean, I don't, I mean, I'd be perfectly fine being average, but like, who wants to be average, really? Like, you didn't wake up to be average today, right? Yeah, no. So, okay, here's a good example of this. You were telling me uh, a story that you had in gym class today. Oh, yeah. Where you were motivated. And you were motivated, I mean, for interesting reasons, but tell us that story. Okay, so we were playing a game in gym called Four Squares. Um, it's basically, um, there are four squares, four players, um, and you have to try to hit a ball. If the ball bounces more than once in your square before you... If you don't hit it, then you're out. There's a server who's technically this place you want to be in. Um, if a certain person gets out, you move from a square, and, um, basically that's how you play the game. Okay. And there was this one kid who I was playing with who seemed to be a cheater, basically. Okay. Um, whenever, like, he was supposed to get out, he's, like, always blames it on the other person, saying it hit the line, it hit the line, when it really didn't. Right. And he would also, um... And he seemed to be making alliances with people who he thought was good um, and so that he could keep his spot in the leadership. And basically, me and I think three other people he was a two other people he was aiming for. Um, and I could just tell. And at one point, he really did hurt my feelings because he just was a complete jerk. Um, and I did end up getting a bit upset, but I decided to use that as a motivating factor to show him what I was made of. Right. And what I did was I played harder. I was able to actually end up um, serving the ball for longer than anyone else had. And literally, the way I knew that it all worked in the end, when we were um, had just finished a round and it was near the end of gym class, he literally like said to me, um, he, ha he said my name, and then he said, do you want to make an alliance? And I'm just like... Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> yeah, so so you used that bad sportsmanship 
that was getting on your nerves to motivate you to be a better player in this case. Yeah. So that's a great example. So the next thing that they go on to talk about for tips is let them have a say. <clears throat> if your teenager feels like all they are being asked to do is to fit into your agenda, your timetable, and conform to your way of doing things, they're not going to be terribly motivated. How important is it for you in motivating yourself to do things for you to have a say in what it is that you're doing? Um, I definitely think it would be important for teenagers because they're getting to that age, even though they might not be that mature, um, but they're getting to a more uh, mature age and it's time to have them make some decisions. Like, you guys have started doing that with me. Like, you're like, Okay, where do you want to eat today? Um, what do you want to do today? Stuff like that. So, like, when we give you something to do, a chore or a task to do, and we say, do it because I told you so, do you find that to be demotivating? Um, in a way, if you, like, just keep repeatedly doing it, that can just be, um, that can definitely demotivate someone because, like, there's no, as we, we're going back to the, um, first, um, motivating factor, like they don't see why they should. Right. Right. And so in situations where we give you chores, we say, all right, such and such has to be done by a certain period of time. You do it. You figure out how to do it, when you're going to do it. Like for instance, you have to do the laundry. Okay. Now you can start the laundry early, get it done fast and have all the time to yourself. We don't dictate how the you how you do that laundry at that point. It's really entirely up to you. Yeah. As long as the, the task is done by a certain time, you've got the freedom to do the task however you want. Yeah. Do you find that helps you? Do you feel more empowered to then do those things and more motivated to do them? Yeah, because if, like, your parents tell you, okay, you have to do this chore in a specific way, and if you don't do it, you're not going to get anything, or you're not... Or they're just going to give you some type of punishment or something. But yeah. And one of the things that they say is set deadlines, which we do, but give the teenagers the freedom to choose when and how the task itself is completed. Yeah. That's like how my menu works. Like there's a right. certain amount of points you need to get in a certain amount of time, but there's all sorts of different things you can do to get those points. Right. That's another great example how the schools are now getting into that mindset now that you're finally to that age that you can start taking, you know, responsibility for for some of these things. And they use that as a motivational factor. Yeah. So the next tip that they talk about, which is one you know I'm a big fan of, and that is let them learn from failure. Oh, yeah. Um, when parents constantly step in and rescue their teens from failing, they undermine their teenager's ability to grow up. No parent wants to see their kids fail, which is true, but... Um, it's a, it's a thorough, it's through failure that we grow and learn to improve. And you know, that's the philosophy that I have. It's okay to fail and make mistakes as long as you learn from them. Yeah. Because like I, there's actually this one, um, quote that I learned from Albert Einstein. Um, and it's like hanging up in my skills room and it's basically people who don't make mistakes don't try anything new. That's a very good point. Like... If you, like, if your parents, const if, like, if you constantly try to protect your child from their mistakes, they're never going to learn from it. And, like, they'll just think, oh, well, if I do this, nothing will happen because my parents will just protect me. Like, I don't, like, there's no consequences. They don't see the consequences and they, like, instead of getting motivated to do the right thing, they're getting motivated to do the wrong thing. And that's very important to point out. <clears throat> Because what gives a task significance is the consequences and what's at stake if it doesn't get done. So if something doesn't get done, that's a motivational factor in and of itself where you're going to have to pay the consequences. Yeah. So that's a very good point. <clears throat> the next thing that they say, and this is something that parents and teachers do regularly, and that is to help them remember uh, it's not always the case that teenagers don't do things because they're not motivated. 
often they fail to follow through simply because they forget. And, you know, as bad as my memory is, I'll be the first one that's sympathetic to somebody who forgets. Yeah. Uh, do you find getting reminders from from mommy and daddy or from your teachers for assignments, do you do you feel that helps to motivate you to do them? Yeah, I mean, like, um, I'll give a few examples. Like, um, you guys telling me to do the laundry. Like, right. although, yes, they might be annoying, but they actually let they help me get the work done, and I'm more motivated than just, like, when I don't get any reminders, and it's just, like, the laundry sits for a day, and I, like, it doesn't get done. Sure, and, and there's a lot of things that are going on in the teen's life, and occasionally a reminder here and there to keep them on track is, is usually appreciated, but you make a very good point that constant verbal reminders and nagging from a parent isn't the way to do it. That's going to demotivate you, right? Yeah, like, if you're constantly getting reminded by something like, um, I mean, I don't really know a pretty good example. Well, flip the laundry. Or, yeah. Hey, you know, the laundry misses you. Oh, yeah, you know, that, that type whole of thing. thing. Yeah, you guys sometimes nag me about that. But honestly, I'm, I've am i taken it better than some kids might have, like, some kids might have just been like they really don't care. Like eventually, as it gets old, they eventually don't care and they don't do it. Right. And you know there are ways that that you can teach teens to be uh, more organized and remember uh, uh, what they need to do. So you know there's some things you can use visual aids, uh, such as charts and color coded timetables on the calendar which we use right yeah. so we have our family calendar that we set out each year each month rather well technically each year too yeah. but on there each of us has a color that's associated with us and any appointments that we have or time specific uh things that we have to take care of and we put that up in the kitchen and we write all of our appointments for the month you know what days you have to have stuff for school when your band lessons are when projects are due, stuff like that. When I'm with a dentist appointment and dentist appointments on the exact same day. <laughs> right, right. Um, so that's a tool that we can use. Um, you can set up routines. You know, one of the things that we can we use for technologies, we use the Amazon Echoes, and we can put timers in there and reminders. You know, brush your teeth. Yeah. Do your homework, whatever it is that you're going to do. But there's tools out there that you can use. Um, you can leave little hints around the house. You can leave little notes in your lunchbox to remind you to do things or little notes on the medicine cabinet when you're brushing your teeth to remember things. Um, or there's apps, you know, there's, there's tons of apps out there to help you organize things. Yeah. So there's different tools to help remind you. It's not just about the parents nagging you to do something, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the next thing that they talk about and this is another one we've spoken of in the past, is make it achievable. Uh, sometimes it's the size of the task that teenagers find difficult. It isn't that they don't want to do it, but rather they don't know where to start, and it looks too hard when you look at a big thing. Um, so what's our philosophy? I mean, we've talked about it on the podcast before. What's our philosophy on tackling large tasks or chores or problems? You take it one step at a time. Right. Right. You break it into smaller parts and you accomplish those parts and then you move on to the next one and you make it more achievable. Yeah, I'm going to throw in the example on our Gupta project. Like, there was one section where we had to provide five facts on a certain topic from the Gupta Empire. Like, it's work first, geometry and climate. Like, we took it a step at a time. We took one of the... um one of the factors and then we found five facts on it and then we found and then we just continued until we ended up finishing all that right and and we broke it down we had we knew what was laid out in front of us and it was a lot we knew what it had to be done by and we did it one one at a time we did our five facts for each and, you know, we had all those topics done in, what, two weeks? Yeah. 
and we still have several weeks left to finish it. We're almost done. You just have to answer the questions based on the facts that we found. So we took what was really a two on the project and, and we did the most, most of it in over the course of two weeks. Yeah. Um, so if your teen's putting off getting started on something, it's sometimes helpful to sit down uh, with them and find out how they're feeling about getting it done. Do you know where to start? You know, like some simple questions to ask. Uh, do you feel that you'll never be able to do it so you can't be bothered starting? Like that's that's one of the motivational factors or demotivational factors a lot of people have where it's like, well, I'm never going to get that done in time, so I'm not even going to bother. And I'll tell you one thing, that's that's one of the demotivation factors that I have, I'm dealing with right now at my desk. Mm. You know, I went out, I bought a new desk that needs to be put together and, and putting furniture together is not my forte. Yeah. Okay. So I rely on, on mommy to help with that. But my biggest problem is the setup that I have at my desk now is so cluttered and so involved. You know, I've spent four weeks now trying to clean it up and I'm still not even there. Uh, so it's one of these things where I just need to get off my butt and get it done at this point in time. So I kind of have to motivate myself to do it. Yeah. So the next thing they talk about is incentives. And and this kind of, it's not the same as what's in it for me, incentives. Um, when we're talking about incentives here, um, it's more specific. So, for instance... Um, not all tasks have an obvious intrinsic consequence uh, to be used for motivation. You know, some school's assignments just need to be done. You, there might not be a direct benefit academically or whatever for you. Uh, some chores don't seem to make a great deal of difference, but they still need to be done for quality of, night, of life, you know? Yeah. If you don't vacuum the floor, the world's not going to end. You're not going to have dirty clothes or whatever, but... You know, you still need to, to empty the trash and, and vacuum the floor. You still need to do that. So when it comes to that type of, of thing, um, then you get into the reward aspect of what's in it for you. Um, so, for instance, by offering a reward for an effort or an improvement um, or participation in something, uh, you can reinforce the values of trying to stick with something and persevere and deal with it. Um, one thing that we do for you is there's a financial benefit to you doing your chores. Um, and this stems, you know, from my part, it stems from me being a kid and didn't have, you know, a job when I was your age and, and, you know, I wanted stuff. So my parents would give me chores to do. My job was once a week, I would take the trash out, put the trash out by the curb I got a couple of bucks from that. In the summertime, if my, my dad wanted work done out in the yard, I'd work with him out in the yard, and he'd give me a couple of bucks to, you know, buy a, a video game or something like that. So I always believed in earning that money. Tell us a little bit about some of the rewards that you get, and you don't have to go into monetary values or anything, but tell us what how it's a motivating factor for you and and the effect that it has on you? Um, well, I'll start off by saying chores. I mean, most people who do chores normally get paid for it. Um, and that can definitely be a motivating factor for anybody because basically you want money so you can get stuff that you want to um, play with and enjoy. So you do something, you perform a labor, and you get a reward, just like a regular job. Yeah, but there's also another factor that comes into it, and it's the, I don't know how to really say it. Um, what's material, um, what does materialistic mean, quickly? I just want Well, materialistic know. is you, you want things. You, you want nice gadgets, nice oh. clothes, you know, it's, there's an intrinsic value to the things. Yeah, that's like the materialistic one. Mine, um... There's another one I have, and it's more of the, um, I don't know, maybe mental reward, or I don't know how to say it, emotional. Right. I don't know. 
It's like whenever I'm able to get my centers done in ELA, um, and the fact I'm able to get a 100 by the end, that, um, is a motivating factor for me, because I want to get that 100. I mean, I don't get really any rewards besides a good grade. It's a personal but. satisfaction is what you're getting there. Okay, there we go. That's the word. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a, there's a prime, and, and like when you're earning money, when, you know, it's different if, if I give you $20, that's a whole different feeling than if you've worked to do laundry or clean for an hour or two and you make $20. Yeah, that's why, like, whenever you guys pay me earlier, I'm like, I'm okay, I'll just earn it. Right, and it's, you're very, you handle that money very differently <clears throat> because to you, there is a direct value associated with that money when you earn it. You know, you work for that. This $20 was an hour or two worth of my effort of doing something. And you tend to be much more uh, frugal, much more protective of that $20 than if it was just something you got for your birthday or something. Because you've earned it. You know, you understand the value of the dollar when, when you work for that reward. Yeah, and some teenagers <laughs> just are like, don't even care if they earn it or not. They just care that they got the money. Right. So the other motivating factor that we have a reward tied to is your grades. Tell us about that one. Um, that one is basically, since I'm a straight-A student, um, I'm basically paid to get straight-A's, in a way. You are. Give us details. Uh, I don't want to go too much into the um, money value, but um, I get a pretty decent amount for, getting, for bringing home um, good A's. Right, so you're... Your reward is tied to bringing an A in each grade. Each grade you bring an A in, like, the requirement isn't to get straight A's. Yeah. For every A that you bring home, there's a, a monetary reward for each A. Yeah. If one marking period you bring home five A's, you make a certain amount. If one you bring in six, you make more. Yeah. So it's that motivating factor, not only that self-satisfaction we talked about of getting the A, which you obviously enjoy, Yeah, there's a motivating factor there. So that's sort of part of the whole idea of, okay, and it doesn't always have to be money. You know, it could be finish all your homework and we'll go get ice cream. Or if you bring home straight A's this year, then we'll go to Disney for uh, summer vacation. Could be anything along those lines. Yeah, like when um, I was into um, the little Teen Titan toys. Um, whenever I did something like it was at our, my band um, concert, um, you had gotten the ones at the store, and every time I did something um, good or something that you thought I earned something, I earned a little reward, you would give one to me. Exactly. Yeah, and it's those little things, and and sometimes those rewards don't have uh, a goal in mind. Sometimes it's, okay, you didn't have any issues this week in school, or you had good days this week, or you're just looking on the bright side. You're being positive this week in school. Let's take you out for a little treat or something like that. It's those motivational things to try to steer that, that uh, behavioral pattern as well. So it's not doesn't just have to be tied to goals or tasks or something like that. It could be just something to look forward to, you know? Yeah. So the last thing, the last point that they make here is um, if you want your team to do something, make it fun. That's always a great motivating factor. Um, this motivational principle applies to people of all ages, not just teens. Most people are more motivated to do something fun rather than something boring. Fun's a key ingredient to getting teens active and motivated to participating in social activities. And I emphasize social activities uh, because a lot of teens do not like to get involved in social activities because it's a very awkward time, right? So if you want your teen to get out of the house and get active and make new friends, explore with them what activities it is they enjoy doing, and encourage them to do it. For instance, um, you like going to the Funplex. Yeah. Well, 
maybe one weekend we take one or two of your friends and you up to the fun plex and get you out and get you socializing and having some fun. Yeah. Um, maybe we go to the park and maybe your friends hang out at the park. Maybe we kick you out of the house and have you play with the kids in the neighborhood. Oh, I was just about to say, if you actually kick me out of the house, what the heck? <laughs> um, remember, uh, what you enjoy may not be what your teens enjoy. So sometimes we drag you to things that you might not enjoy. Uh, you still have to do them. So what mommy and daddy tend to do is try to make it fun. Try to make, make there be uh, something for you to do. If we go to a convention that you're not particularly interested in, We'll try to find something at that convention that might pique your interest. Yeah, and, like, there's also another motivating factor that goes on my brain at that point because I know you both enjoy it, um, and I don't want to let you down or get you upset because I don't like seeing people upset, let alone my own parents. So I have to keep that factor in mind. Yeah, and, and like, you know, you don't want to disappoint us, but... Something like that typically wouldn't, but we certainly appreciate you wanting to allow us to enjoy the things that we do. Yeah. And by doing that, then we go out of our way to en ensure you have an opportunity to enjoy the things that you enjoy. So it's a give and take street. Yeah. So that was what we had for that segment. We'll come back and we'll talk about and the, a segment really directed towards the parents that are tips for inspiring your teens. So these tips come from a website called thepositivemom.com. How much nicer of a website could that be, right? Yeah. So the first thing that they say is they say, be proactive. Uh, being proactive means equipping our kids with tools to be prepared and inspired to be productive uh, and to do something meaningful with their time year round. Uh, your teenager has complete control of their attitude, their choices, their language, their behavior. You get the point. Yeah. Um, this particular mom says, I didn't like uh, these when I first learned them, but it's something you have utter control. You, it's There's something you have utter control of as a parent um, being a healthy role model. You know, that's really the one thing as a parent we can be. Uh, everything else, really the teen's in charge of. Um, so their suggestion here from a proactive standpoint is become the person uh, that's worthy of your teen's admiration. Um, this is an area that yeah, I'll be the first one to admit. Um, I probably did not do very well with um, earlier on with Sam, uh, my son, your brother. Um, he, for the longest time, uh, looked up to me and admired me, and, and I don't think I lived up to it as well as I could have with him. Um, and as a result, I'm suffering for it now, uh, and, I, and I think it had an adverse effect on him. So one of the things that I am trying to do is try to be more worthy of that with you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I hope I hope I am. Am I? Yep, of course. Okay, just checking. Yeah. They go on to say, in order to become a powerful influence in your teen's life, you must start by listening to their thoughts, feelings, hopes, dreams, worries, uh, and fears. Uh, are mommy and daddy good listeners to you? Of course you are. Like, you actually say that, like... Sometimes it's best not to try and um, uh, fix someone's problems, but it's better to just listen. Like when mommy has a bad day at work um, she and she needs to lash out, or if I have a bad day at school, sometimes it just helps to listen because you don't always have the solution. Yeah. I definitely think you guys um, definitely listen to me and listen to my opinions, um, um, and I thank you for that. Um well, one of the things they also say is um, to ask meaningful questions so you understand your son or daughter's temperament and what she's passionate about and what moves them and what drives her and your goals and your dreams. Uh, and I have to tell you, 
when I see you get passionate about something or get interested in something, um, like when you brought your uh, story down to, to read, uh, that to me, that inspires me. That, that makes me uh, want to be more involved and to spend that time. Uh, in fact, we're going to be doing a podcast on it next week on your artistic side. Uh, and I'm very much looking forward to it. I'm very Me excited too. about what we're going to be able to do with it. Uh, so seeing that passion in you stirs that passion in me for for art and creativity. Um, they say you could motivate a team temporarily to comply with your request, but inspiring them uh, requires that you know what their core identity is. Uh, and... Your core identity is changing. It's going to change, be changing for several years now. Um, and I think part of the problem that I ran into uh, with Sam is that I lost touch with that. You know, I had frozen Sam in time at 10 years old or 12 years old. And that was sort of the image that I, I kept of him for the next few years and, and I didn't give him the, uh, freedom to change in my perception, you know, and, and by holding on to that, that stale perception, that was a few years old. I think that kind of hurt our relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think the one thing that I learned from that, um, is to, to, kind of go with the ebb and flow as, as you change and evolve. And I see it, I see it like almost on a daily basis, you know, where we will get into these habits and we'll do something for a little while. And then your, your taste change and your style changes and your interests change. Uh, and I, I used to be afraid of that with Sam because, you know, with Sam, I knew that there was going to come a time where, he wasn't going to want to hang out anymore. And, and that scared me, you know, but I think it's different with you now, uh, in seeing that and being a part of it. You know, I got to see Sam once a week, so I didn't get to be a part of it with Sam. I got to be an observer with Sam. Uh, so seeing you change and being here while you're changing and while your interests change and, and seeing how you evolve and, and being directly involved with that. Um, I think if I had that opportunity with Sam, things probably would have been a, bit, a little bit different. Um, but it's, it's inspiring to me to see that in you. Uh, and that leads to the, the next one, which I think is a direct relation. And that is to be present. A parent's most sacred duty is to nurture their children. Being present means speaking your teen's love language to communicate you love them. Now, do you know what love language is? Not really, no. Okay. We're going to do a podcast on this because... Oh, no, it's not what you think it is. Okay. Love language is how you communicate with someone. Oh. And there is a, there's a test to do this with. And Mommy had, had turned me on to the test. Um, a friend of hers, Katie, had turned her on to it. And you go through and you answer these questions as to how things affect you. Like, are you more inclined to um, shows of affection? Are you more inclined? Do you respond to uh, people doing something for you, um, saying nice things to you, buying you things, that type of thing? Like, what? How are you most responsive? What do you like? How do you like to be treated really is what it is. Oh. And when other people know how you like to be treated and they treat you that way, then the relationship is much better. Oh. So I think we're going to do a podcast on that. I, I was debating whether or not to, but I think it's worthwhile to do it. Yeah. So uh, where was I? So being present means giving your teen your undivided attention, even when they tell you they don't want it. And I think, I think I'm overbearing enough with you to do that, aren't I? Yep. Because uh, there are times that you come home and you're angry, you're irritated, and don't want to be bothered. 
And what do I do? The book is stick in my cage. That's right. And I don't do it to annoy you. I do it so that you know that, you know, when I see you like that, I can't just walk away. Because if, if I just walk away and let you be, then it's like, all right, well, I, you don't, I don't have time for you. I don't want to be bothered. Mm. But when I see that you're upset or there's something bothering you, I want to know about it. I want to know how your day was. I want to, did you have a bad day? Did you have a good day? Is there anything I can do to help your day? Like, let's, let's talk about it. Let's find out. Um, that's kind of why I like having those talks. You know, if you're not calling me at work because I'm busy, I like having those talks over dinner and finding out how your day was. Um, because I'm not there all day, you know, I don't, I don't get to see you all day. So sort of getting that summary at the end of the day is important. Yeah. So they say, put away the digital devices and look at your team. Really, really connect with him or her and ask them open, honest, and vulnerable questions. We do this podcast once a week. Uh, and there's a lot of vulnerable questions that come up. There's a lot of emotions that come out and we do it as much for the audience to, to try and educate the audience and help the audience get through a lot of these things. But really it's, it's you and I talking about these things and we only do these once a week, but we have our other chance the rest of the week. Yeah. Um, so, you know, for the parents out there, it's important to, to be there and listen and be involved. And, you know, all parents are concerned about their kids uh, and all kids want to be heard. They want to have a voice. Um, all people do, you know, nobody wants to be neglected. So if you're generally interested and really engaged, the more enriching the conversation, you know, you and I'll sit and talk about silly things for an hour or two hours. And eventually, you know, that conversation turns to important things. And, and I think that time is very well spent when we do that. Yeah. So. And the last thing that they talk about here, and this is one that I think I try to encourage you to do whenever possible, and that is to be positive. Uh, though our teens seem to forget how wonderful they are, their brain is still developing, and we can still encourage them, reassure them, and affirm them so they can continue to see the abilities, gifts, and positive characteristics and attributes that they have. Um, everybody has bad days, and, and sometimes we get down on ourselves if we, you know, don't do as well on a test that we thought we should have or someone said something or does something to us. Um, but it's important to, to be positive, and, and I think our, you know, that starts with the parents. We have to let our kids know that, you know, nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes. But you know what? You dust yourself off, you get up, and you get right back at it. Uh, being positive and helping them see that they're capable and they're worthy of our love and respect. And, and I think that's probably the most important thing about parents. You know, it's not, that, it's not just that we love you. It's that you deserve that love. You know, you are that special and you are that important that you deserve that love from us. You know, yeah, we have to love you because we're, you're our kids. You know, I think, you know, there's some unwritten law that says that, but, but we love you because you deserve to be loved. Whether you bring home straight A's or not, you know, even if you don't, you, one Mark and Pierre, you brought home a B and neither mommy nor daddy wound up getting upset over you over that. Um, but you were pretty tough on yourself at that point. So, and it's okay to, to, to have the drive and motivation to want to be good, but you know, you have to understand that we're, we're not perfect. Yeah. So, so what do you think about those? Uh, I definitely think they're all, um, very important factors for parents to have to help motivate your teen because teens have a lot on their minds, like we said before, and having that driving force from the parents to have them motivated and for the parents to be interactive with the kids um, is definitely helpful because, like you said before, everyone wants attention. No one wants to be neglected. And genuinely, the people who are neglected don't end up being motivated to do anything at all. Right. So before we close out to uh, 
your closing remarks and shout outs. Let me ask you, do you feel motivated and inspired on a day to day basis? Yes, I do. Um, I'm always trying to be motivated for like either schoolwork or to help, um, to at least um, become a better person. I always feel as though I want to be motivated for some reason, um, at least one every day, hopefully. Okay. Let me ask you one final question. What do you find you tend to draw your motivation and inspiration from? Um, I definitely draw most of it from you and Mommy because you guys have been very positive role models for me. You, um, I definitely developed some of your personality traits. I mean, yes, you sadly, have. some of the bad ones as well. But <laughs> Yes, you have. <laughs> but I've definitely... Um, You've definitely taught me how to learn from my mistakes, not to be so hard on myself, be a bit more positive, even though that doesn't always work, be a little more social, and you've definitely taught me a lot of life skills that will eventually motivate me to um, drive my um, boat forward, I suppose. Okay. We will come back, and we will get your closing remarks for the audience. Go for closing remarks. Alrighty, everyone. Motivation. It's something we all are probably going to have to experience no matter what. Parents out there who have teenagers, please try to be interactive with them. Everyone needs attention, as we said before. No matter what, um, your teen is going to want attention in some way or another. If you don't give them a, that attention, they're not motivate. They're not going to be motivated enough to do something, and they won't, probably won't be able to find their passions, and they won't develop as well if you aren't interactive with them. Okay, that was a uh, good closing remark segment. Thank you. I think that will do it for us today. Before we go, we do want to give you some contact information. Uh, if you want to give us an email with your thoughts and feedback, you can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can check us out on the web at www.insightsintothings.com. Our video podcasts are available on YouTube at youtube.com slash insightsintothings. You can get our video podcast, uh, sorry, our audio podcast at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. You can check us out streaming weekly uh, on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. Or you can get us on Twitter at uh, insights underscore things. And you can find our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast hosted by you and my brother Sam. Very good. I think we are done. Alrighty. We're out of here. Bye, everyone. Bye.